Hi. Um, thank you for attending. I didn't expect that many people to attend, attend my session. Uh, so I probably take it. Uh, so yes, my name is Anton Malakhov. I work for Intel for quite a uh, long time already. And uh, I'm going to tell you something, uh, something I hope in you about uh, multi-core parallelism. Uh, first of all, I hope you, all of you have Python in your mind. So it probably will be uh, convenient for you if you import some accents and bear with me. Okay. So, uh, what is the purpose of this presentation? We make uh, multi-core parallelism faster. And uh, if you're using some, apparently, uh, some Python for scientific computing, well, just for computing, especially if you use uh, NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, and so on, uh, especially acceler accelerated versions. Uh, and if you use Dask or JobLeap or consider to use it, I hope you attended those sessions as well. Uh, well, that might be not enough. So what, what you can do more to squeeze out everything from your hardware? And uh, what is missing in current computer ecosystem? Uh, what's the problem? So let's start from the basics. And I do apologize, I show this slide, probably you are tired of something like saying, all, all the parallel sessions saying that uh, there are more transistors, but same frequency. Uh, that's why more processor cores, more hardware threads. Well, probably I can uh, extend it that pointing out to this beast, uh, which has 30 Core, uh, 70 cores and up to uh, 300 threads. Uh, so this is why it is important. Uh, uh, Multi-core is ubiquitous. ubiquitous. Uh, so how, how that grows reflect uh, to how you execute the code? So let's start from a single processor, like old good days. Uh, and we have a program here. So the time goes from left to right on all the, uh, those pictures. And we have something like a sequential part of this uh, timeline, uh, a part which is potentially can be parallel and sequential again. So let's start increasing the number of uh, processors. Two processors, faster. Four processors, more faster eight processors. So if you notice that, uh, well, eight processors, but only twice faster than initial sequential program. So the issue is that we faced limitation of Amdahl's law, um, which states that speed up is limited by the serial portion of the work. Uh, and even more, uh, Python is even more vulnerable to this issue because, well, uh, serial regions are bigger, which is obviously, I guess, because I have to add this Python word here and text box becomes bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, motivation for this work is that, well, multi-core is big, uh, everywhere and number of processors grows and um, there is Andal low and Python is slow. So what we can do about that? So uh, let's expose more parallelism in your applications. Well, assuming global lock is not an issue for compute-bound applications. Uh, and how we can achieve that? Well. One way is to uh, introduce nested parallelism into a program. So let's assume we have, initially we have a program uh, which has like outermost for loop. And inside this for loop we do 
pretty much the same uh, like sequential and parallel program I showed you before. So and now we start to execute this, repeat this program uh, in a parallel. So we have, well, this is outermost parallelism and uh, here it is becomes nested parallelism. And you can do your computations inside this nested parallelism and even more if uh, NumPy in this case is accelerated using threads, then it will be yet another level of nested parallelism. So it's uh, well, and uh, like real life applications, they are not always um, uh, can use some outermost loop because not all uh, application based on this. But there are other types of uh, parallelism for your service, for example, functional. Uh, functional parallel pipeline uh, so but the issue with them is that uh, the uh, the scalability is limited so you, uh, functional for example as many functions you have it can only scale to that many function functions and pipeline has uh, like the same issue uh, dogs uh, yeah and the picture here with its too ideal to be true. Uh, for example, it's like ideally uh, balanced everywhere. Well, and it actually it rather corresponds pipeline type of parallelism. While this code uh, can result in some issues, which I show here. So, if we have many uh, like parallel regions, which let's assume create threads or reuse threads from many pools. And if we multiply those thread pools, well, it leads to this oversubscription and it incurs a lot of overheads and issues up to like denial to servers, like just open MP say, I cannot create that many threads. That's all. Um, so this is disease and uh, we need a cure. Uh, so the cure is like, we need to define a uh, trading composability and uh, like any other composability, if you know, like composability is when one component coexists well with another uh, component. In this case, threaded parallel components should coexist well uh, with each other. Uh, and uh, Intel approach to that problem was uh, actually established something like 10 years ago. Actually, when I joined Intel, I started with uh, this project and I worked for Intel building, build, building blocks for nine years. Uh, uh, what is this? So this is a runtime library which does all the uh, thread management, letting developers focus on uh, parallel patterns and exposing parallelism to the application. So it scales up to the number of real hardware uh, resources you have and uh, it's uh, designed for the nested parallelism, like in the mind, it's main idea of, the, of this uh, library to uh, have nested parallelism, parallelism support. Uh, and by the way, it's committed to compiler independence, processor independence, operation system independence. So it works not only on Intel hardware. That's why it can uh, possibly be used uh, generally by community. Um, and what I suggest here is uh, we can use TBB, which was designed to address those uh, oversubscription issues, threading composability, use as uh, part of Python ecosystem for uh, orchestrating uh, parallelism inside application. So, for example, we have, if application use NumPy, SciPy, it can use uh, uh, Intel Data Analytics Library, Joblib, Dask, whatever. If they all define the own threading system, it will be a mess. And if we put everything on top of uh, TPB runtime, 
uh, it will solve, solve all the issues, well, mostly. Uh, and let me introduce also, just in case, uh, Intel distribution for Python. So this, uh, we, we solve uh, this issue uh, as part of uh, Intel distribution for Python. And uh, what it does, it accelerates uh, libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, and so on, uh, with uh, very well optimized and vectorized, seemed vectorized and uh, parallel parallelized libraries like MKL, DAL. Well, IPP is not parallel but vectorized. Uh, and you probably can scan it and download right now. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, as part of this distribution, we introduced it uh, Intel TBB model for Python. So, uh, TBB trading is already supported by uh, MKL and DAL, which means it's exposed to NumPy, SciPy, and other uh, Python libraries which use NumPy and, well, MKL. Uh, and what it does, uh, it switches uh, when it's, uh, this model is enabled, it switch MKL into TBB uh, threading layer mode. And moreover, it uh, provides uh, a pool interface similar to the one implemented uh, in Python. So that it is possible to monkey patch uh, like thread pool, standard Python thread pool, and replace it with TBB based implementation. So that's what I did, and uh, uh, in order to use it, use this uh, ability, you just can run your Python with like this dash m tbb, and that's all you need just to unleash additional performance if you have it. Uh, so let's start with some uh, examples finally. Uh, so the code here is pretty much artificial. It just takes uh, curve decomposition and validates whether it was correct or not. Uh, implemented with NumPy in this case. Uh, and, uh, well, Matthew did good presentation about Dask, so I hope I don't have to present Dask. So here is Dask version of the same stuff. What it does, it uh, uh, takes like the whole array and splits it using this grain size into, in this case, 10 tasks. Uh, and by the way, the reason why it takes 10 tasks, hello, uh, but in fact, my hardware has 32 uh, threads. So the reason is that this is, uh, it is quite hard to find a small example uh, which represents the problem. But uh, like real application have all those like functional pipeline type of parallelism which does not scale that well. And usually on this uh, outermost level of parallelism there is no much uh, tasks available to run in parallel. So this code kind of models this uh, situation. Uh, and so let's run it. Sorry, it's not interactive, but we have we had to wait as wise to too much, and I have only thirty minutes. Uh, so if we run default default NumPy uh, as part of uh, Intel distribution for Python, so it's accelerated with MKL, it is uh, vectorized, multi-threaded. Uh, we run this this. Uh, program, we have like something like a baseline here. Uh, the issue is that if we use Dask uh, and run this program using Dask, it becomes slower. So the question, why? Who knows? So nobody understood what I told before. Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't clear. So this is because of oversubscription because Dask creates that 10 tasks and inside those tasks NumPy 
is uh, calls MKL. MKL is parallelized using OpenMP. OpenMP creates 32 for this machine threads. So in total, it's like three, 300 threads, and it is too much for the operation system to deal with. And uh, it becomes slower. Uh, so what we can do, for example, if we remove uh, innermost parallelism by serializing MKL, well, NumPy becomes that slow uh, because no parallelism here. Well, but Dusk becomes quite good. But since I have only 10 tasks, it's, it doesn't uh, uh, come up, doesn't uh, uh, work that as well as baseline uh, NumPy. Um, but when we enable a TBB model, as just as this Python dash M TBB, and run the same program or programs, uh, so we have this uh, not very good picture here with NumPy because uh, TBB mode for NumPy. Uh, for MKL, sorry, uh, is quite in, in its infancy and uh, not as optimized as OpenMP version. But on the other hand, it's pretty much enough to achieve the best performance for this benchmark. Just by using uh, nested parallelism and uh, this composability model. Another case study, uh, it's a collaborative filtering like uh, what, what you would be suggested by sites, like what to buy next, what to watch next. So it's pretty much matrix, matrix multipli multiplication problem. And if you take uh, this application uh, with like default Python, com which comes with Fedora Linux distribution, we have this baseline. Uh, if you run very same program, but using Intel distribution for Python, we have this 17 times speed up. Uh, okay, why is that? Well, one of the, of the reason is that is it is parallel. What if we implement uh, this parallelism on the outermost level instead of using uh, MKL? Uh, it's good, not as good as uh, MKL, but still 15 times speed up. But running the same program uh, using Intel distribution for Python, we have a problem here. By the way, Houston is quite near, right? And uh, so it's s s s slower. Uh, the reason is again oversubscription. Uh, but if you run it in uh, TBB mode, we are again achieve the best performance. And finally, uh, like in this picture with components, different components, uh, uh, which can be used uh, in your application, Nuba is quite uh, uh, important part. And that's why we also did uh, a work to uh, make TBB threading for Numba. And here I show how to like using Numba make your program uh, parallel uh, on multi-core. So you define something like uh, ufunc vectorized and then say parallel. So let's see. Uh, so this is uh, original Numba implementation. And uh, here it is uh, problem sizes like starting from 1,000 and doubles. Uh, and using TBB, just without much optimizations, uh, which can be done with TBB, and just very straightforward implementation already resulted in this uh, performance boost here. And uh, for comparison, this is NumPy, even accelerated with uh, MKL. Uh, so this is not type of program, so thanks to loop fusions, yeah, Numba behaves better. Uh, well, that's pretty much enough. Uh, 
no liability, sorry. Uh, and so let me summarize quickly. So nested parallelism like is the key to the future. Uh, oversubscription might hit performance of your future applications or even existing applications. And uh, we solve this issue introducing Intel TBB model for Python. Uh, it fixes oversubscription. Uh, it enables uh, MKL and uh, through MKL, NumPy, SciPy, and many other packages, scientific packages are enabled. Uh, we enable thread pool. It uh, resulted that Dask, JobLeap are enabled. And Numba also play nice in this picture. So uh, you can also scan this. Uh, what else? Something I missed. Okay. I guess that's all. Thank you. So how to avoid oversubscription? Well, uh, use only one level of uh, parallelism, but that's probably not the fastest performance you can get, or use this approach. <laughs> or you, another way is, well, you can carefully partition like all your threads uh, using OpenMB keys, something like that, kind of a work. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it's just uh, yeah here. Yes, uh, it's because uh, well, uh, MKL is not very optimized for threading layer. Not yet. Uh, it's quite infancy stage of all this stuff. But nevertheless, you can have already some results. That's what I missed. Thank you a lot. <laughs> Uh, yes, so it is available in binary forms as part of Intel distribution for Python. It is available on Anaconda Intel channel. And uh, it is available in open source as part of uh, TBB uh, package, open source package. Okay. Yes, currently GPL2 with runtime exception, and uh, it has uh, no charge commercial license. MKL is distributed for free. And you might expect some changes to TBB as well, to license it. Well, well in the good side direction. <laughs> Thank you.